Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dorfler here for an exciting video on practicing naming and formula writing of ionic compounds. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to watch the video uh, of the discussion that I had over some of the rules um, that we use to name compounds as well as write the formulas. Gonna need to know them. Um, and I apologize for the length of the video that I just posted regarding that. Uh, there's just a lot of practice to do, a lot of explaining to do. Um, and again, the, we, we just have to practice, 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 and we have to, and I don't like this word a whole lot, memorize, 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 okay? The more time and effort you put into doing this, and I've probably said this 100 times by now, but you will be so much better off going forward for at least the remainder of the semester, if not the remainder of the year when it comes time for this. So make sure that you do the extra uh, work outside of the classroom to help you get to understand this. Because as I said from day one, you can't come into the classroom and just expect to know everything once you leave here. As much as I wish you could, it's just not possible with the amount of stuff that we need to know um, and the amount of stuff that's connected to each other. So you have to go do the work outside of the classroom. Anyway, what we're going to do today is I'm going to do a, a few examples of formula writing and uh, naming of these ionic compounds. And um, the worksheet that I'm doing the examples on, um, I'll be also providing to you so you can follow along and then you can complete um, the worksheet so you have some more practice, okay? Now, I finally have my uh, program that I use to do you know, work up here on my desk, got that working. I just, you know, the tried and true restart the computer. So um, we're going to go ahead and do some practice. And then I believe this should be one of the last videos I'm going to bother you with today. But um, in order to do this video, I need to go to the upside down. I'll see you in a minute. All right. So let's try to get this lined up as best as I can. And oop, sorry. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll even do a little zoom in. Okay, so let's start off with lithium acetate. Now, I'm not going to do all of these, okay? I'm not going to do all of these. What I want you to do is follow along with me, join in the fun, and then you're going to do these, uh, the ones that remain, on your own. The first one I wanted to come to is lithium acetate. Yeah, it's number one on this sheet, but, you know, I wanted to still do it first. Okay, so lithium we can figure it out fairly simple because it's simply just the element and its symbol is Li and it is located in the first group as we see right here and so we have a plus one charge. But acetate, okay, acetate is a polyatomic ion and it's made up of multiple elements here and it can also be written in more than one way, all right? So, it can be written like this, C2H3, that is a 3, O2, or you can see it written like this, CH3COO. And really what, what the difference is, is the in this uh, version of it, all they've done is just simply group the same elements together. So there's, as you see, there's two carbons. They just put them as subscripts. I'm trying to save a little bit of space, but really in, in the end, it's all about the same. Oxygen, again, there's two oxygens I just put down there. So you're going to see this written either way throughout your time in here. So it doesn't matter. Um, but just sticking with this first one, acetate has a minus one charge. And so we do the whoop, whoop, and we get the formula of LiC2H3O2. And that is lithium acetate. <clears throat> Let's go to ammonium oxide. Okay. And ammonium is our really our one and only positively charged polyatomic ion. And oxide, because the anion has the IDE, it's simply just the element of oxygen, two minus, okay? So we whoop, 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 but remember, 
if you watch the video that I posted before this, that anytime you put a subscript on a polyatomic ion, you have to put that polyatomic ion into parentheses. So we get NH4 2O. Again, ammonium is a polyatomic ion. We put a subscript of two on there, so therefore it has to go into um, the brackets. And let's do let's do let's do the last one. We'll split it up. Manganese seven arsenide. Now, if you look at manganese on the periodic table here, it only gives you a two plus and a four plus option. Or in fact, manganese can and does have more than the listed um, ionic charges on the periodic table that you, that you are going to get or already have. Um, but either way, we don't have to make a big guess as to what charge it is because we are told right here. Okay. That Roman numeral stands for seven. And so to do this, MN seven plus. Now, sorry if my hands are a little shaky. I've got some. I think I tweaked my shoulder over the weekend, and it's not wanting me to write a whole uh, lot right now. But we're going to anyway. And then arsenide, okay, IDE ending, that means it's simply just an element of arsenic. And arsenic can be found in group number five. So it just needs three electrons to make it have a full belly of eight. So it's going to have a um, minus three or three minus charge. And I put those really far away for some odd reason, but who cares? So we whoop, 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 and we get the formula of MN3AS7. And then, of course, of all the ones, that, all the formulas that we do, we always, before you hit the finalize button, we always want to make sure that um, the appropriate subscripts are in simplest um, or lowest whole number ratios. And so far we've done that. Okay. All right. Let's go the other direction now. Let's look at the um, formulas and give the name. <clears throat> I'm going to hop on over to number two here. Okay. V2 SO4 in parentheses three. Okay, well, you probably have never seen or heard of this particular element. That is vanadium, <clears throat> okay? It is, oops, sorry, vanadium, right there, okay? And it can have a plus five or a plus three charge. So we have to figure out which one did it get, uh, did it get used, okay? So again, I'm going to go in the opposite direction as I did while I was coming up with the names, or sorry, coming up with the formulas. I'm going to reverse the whooping, and so I'm going to get V2 and then SO4, 3. I want to put the subscripts of 2 and 3 on the opposite corner, sub, superscript of the opposite um, element or ion. Rouch. Rouch. Okay. So now this gives me V3 plus and SO4, 2 minus. So... By doing that reversal, we see that this particular ion of vanadium used the um, three plus charge. So when I write the name, we'll have vanadium, Roman numeral three in parentheses, three sulfate. You can't see that, can you? There we go. Vanadium three sulfate. Okay. Again, that's just sloppy parentheses. I tried to fix it and it didn't really work out the best. So those are parentheses. They do exist there. Okay. Let's move on down to, oh, this will be a fun one. KMNO4. Okay. <clears throat> so we've got potassium and then we have MNO4. So right here, this is an oxy anion. So we have to think back to some of those names, okay? Manganese, yeah, it's kind of an interesting um, substance because it's a metal, but yet here we have it bonding with a an oxygen to form 
a negatively charged oxyanion. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. No worries here. But because manganese, again, is in the third row or below, in fact, it's in the fourth row even, so it will have the, the ability to hold a maximum number of four oxygens. And so we have to come up and remember those rules that we were talking about with those particular uh, situations. So since this has four oxygens present, that means it holds the most oxygens present here. So we have to think about the um, naming when we come to that. But first, let's put our attention on the cation, because we always write that first. And that's potassium. Okay, potassium just has a plus one charge. Okay, and you notice that the potassium in here does not have a um, subscript. So that tells me, because potassium, when it's a plus one charge, and it does not have a subscript, that means that the um, anion is also a minus one because there's no subscript placed on the two when this formula is being made. Well, that's good, but potassium can only form a, a, a single ion anyway, so it just gets the name potassium. Okay? Now, because this oxyanion has the maximum number of four oxygens present, we have to use the prefix of per- and the ending of A-T-E, manganate. You have to be very careful. M-N is ma manganese. M-G is magnesium. Do not confuse them because that would be a bad day in the lab. So potassium per manganate. Per because we hold the maximum number of four oxygens in the oxyanion, and then we also have the eight for that same reason. Okay. Now, let's see. Let's see here. Let's go up to SNS2. So, let's identify what SN is. Well, SN is 10. But 10 has the ability to form more than one um, ion. It's not a transition metal. Tin is not a transition metal, but it still has the ability to form, <clears throat> excuse me, more than one ion. So we'll have to eventually figure which one that is, okay? Then S, okay? We see that S has two, okay? And it just being the symbol for sulfur, that means it's going to be sulfide, okay? But we have to figure out which tin was used. And so we get a lot of our hints from the formula itself. Okay. When we form this formula and we do the whooping initially, okay, S, N, and S, tin, or sorry, not tin, sulfur, we know always has a two minus charge based off of its location in the periodic table right here. Sulfur is always going to have a two charge. So, but if you notice here, I have a formula of SNS2. Well, if I were to whoop this and put it down here, I should have SN2. But it's not there. Where did it go? Well, here's what happened. In order for it to become SNS2, there had to have been some reducing uh, taking place. And we can double check, as we mentioned. Tin has the ability of doing a 2 plus or a 4 plus. Let's say tin was a 2 plus, okay, and it got whooped. So then we'd have SN2, S2, and then if we simplified it, we would just get SNS because 2 would be the greatest common factor between those two subscripts. But we don't have SNS. What we do have is SNS2. So if I use the second cation that tin can form, SN4 plus along with the S2 minus, I then whoop, whoop, I get SN2S4. But if we simplify these subscripts by the greatest common factor, which would be 2, we get SNS2. So, 
We had to do a little thinking on that one, which is fine. You're going to have to do some thinking on some of these. I'm not going to lie. So that means that my name for this particular uh, compound will be tin parentheses four sulfide. So, ha ha, you got to be sneaky and clever when you're thinking on some of these, okay? But I don't want to take all the fun from you. I want you to continue working on this worksheet. And then um, I want to have it completed so when we do go over it in class tomorrow, for those of you who will be in uh, school tomorrow, um, you can ask any questions you might have, and I can walk you through why I got the answers that I did. Okay, so I'm going to post this video here in just a moment. I am going to also post the um, worksheet for you to uh, work on as well. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of me. Email is probably the best uh, uh, way right now, or um, just work as best and diligently as you can and ask questions tomorrow in class. Okay. Um, with that being said, I have to figure out how to, there we go. My computer's changed on me just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording and get you working on some practice. Have a good day.